Logical thinking and an open mind is critical and key when watching these videos. We talk about metaphysics on this channel, so in case you didn't know, now you know.
Boy, serious at Serious Inner Temple Spiritual Network. We're back at it with another video. Taking care of this one today, and um, I appreciate you guys for your patience and supporting the channel. And uh, we're dealing with season four, of course, and we're dealing with uh, a particular species known as the Blue Avians. I'll say that again: the Blue Avians, as you can see here on the screen. 
much is not known about them, and uh, we're going to be discussing uh, this subject today. I wrote some things down for you guys because I know you guys have certain questions, and uh, we're definitely going to get started with this video here. Uh, I want you guys to understand that the, the, the reason why, I want to say this first, the reason why we discuss the certain subjects that we discuss on Sirius Center Temple is because it is extremely necessary for us to understand that there are different life forms and different things going on in other dimensional realms and other places that we cannot perceive with our five senses in this third dimensional corporeal world that we live in today. Many people might scoff and say, oh, you might be crazy. Why do you believe in these things, this and that? But those people don't understand that we're not the only people on the planet and in this, in this world. There's, there's an a boundless amount of space out there in the cosmos. And you're telling me that there's nothing else out there but just us? And for all the people that also say they believe in God and things of this nature. If you believe in that, then there has to be more. Because he's not going to just create himself, create you guys on a planet, and then that's it. Okay? It just, does, it just doesn't add up. And then all these UFO sightings, all these spaceship sightings, all these, you know, these, these, these uh, underwater uh, UFOs that are coming out of the water. That are submerged underwater. The government dealing with these types of entities and things of this nature. What is all that about? On this channel, we are discussing that which is being hidden in the dark. Because it's time for these kinds of things to come out in, 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 uh, in the world around us. It's time for this uh, truth to come out. Okay? So please, when you come on this channel, come here with an open mind. To be able to retain information. To a higher degree. Okay. With that being said, let's begin. So the blue avians, as you can clearly see, they look like bird-like entities. A brief description on them, well, I'm sure you can see them on the screen, but there may be some things you guys may not know. Blue avians, they appear, they, ver they appear very humanoid. They have very small beaks. And as you can see, there's two different variations of them on the screen. You have male and female. They have short uh, feathers all around their bodies. The, most of their feathers range from blue to purple. I've even seen I've even seen some, some may even uh, range from like pink to, to orange to blue to purple. Their beaks are usually orange to yellow. Some of them wear clothing. Some choose not to. They have many different types of personalities. Their eyes can be from different ranges. Some of their eyes may be orange, dark brown, completely black. Some of them, their, their feathers can, uh, they can range from different types of uh, color spectrums, as you can see. And uh, they use their fingers, as, as you can see the one on the screen, they use their fingers for communication as well. A lot like our people on the planet here, we use our fingers for communication, okay? Okay, the, the origins of using fingers for communication comes from our Anunnaki or Anunnaki people. They're very tall. They're not usually short unless they're like children. You know, they're usually tall from like six feet to seven feet tall. You know, you have some that are five feet as well. You know, um, they can, um, they, they, they sing very beautifully. And um, much is not known about them, like things that they can do. For example, they uh, they come in as as light beings because this is this is what we're dealing with. These are actually light beings. These are in fact light beings. These light beings are very different from other uh, so-called bird type alien extraterrestrial because you do have others, and we will be discussing those. Things that they can do, see they come in as light before they show up as bird-like entities, okay? They come in as like a ball of light, 
some people have reported on the planet that a lot of times in certain like farm like areas or abandoned areas even around crop circles even around certain areas on the planet where there's not a lot of people a lot of times they see balls of light like spectrums of big balls of light flying around or, you know I've even, I even know people that have reported seeing balls of light moving around and in the, it, the light is moving around as if it has a mind of its own. This can be a blue avian extraterrestrial being. Why do they come in as that? It is because this um, form that you see in front of you, they choose to take on this form. Okay? You know, some people say that the blue avians can choose many different forms. But this is the form that they chose when they came into existence. These are some things that people say. Now, where, where do they come from? The blue avians come from higher dimensional realms, like your, se your seventh dimensional realm, tenth dimensional realm, and higher up. These are, these are highly, these are really, um, they, they, they're higher dimensional beings. And they're, they're extremely high, higher dimensional beings. They have a lot of knowledge. These are actually really old beings. Okay? They've been around for an extremely long period of time. Okay? Alright? Your Alpha and Omega Draconians, they know them. They have come in contact with one another. The Blue Avians have even visited the planet that you guys call the Second Sun or Nibiru. They've been there before. Okay, they know a lot of the beings that are on that planet. Okay, and the blue avians, they usually, they can talk, but they usually do not speak using their mouths. They usually communicate through telepathy. Okay, a lot of times they try to shoot images into your mind. A lot of times they actually speak to you from a mental perspective. They, they speak to you mentally. People don't realize this. But speaking with your mouth is actually a lower form of communication. A higher form of communication is speaking through the mind. They choose to speak through the mind, but that does not mean that they can't speak with their mouths. They simply choose to speak with their minds because there are certain things that using your mind can perceive and be able to uh, explain dealing with higher forms of vibrational codes that the mouth simply cannot regurgitate. So there's certain things that you can say with your mind and with light codes coming coming from uh, um, light um, light spectrums coming from your mind. These are codes that are that are being uh, given from one being to another, and there's certain types of uh, information that can only be perceived through the mind and not with outward spoken words. So in case you guys didn't know that, now you know they are pacifists. Yes, blue avian beings do not like to fight. It doesn't mean that they won't defend themselves if they have to. But usually, most of them that you run into, they do not like conflict. They don't like fighting. Okay? And they do not like being around beings that like to start problems. They do not like being around beings that like to start issues and things like that. So all these Archons, Draco, like the, the lower Draconian species, the lower ones, like the, the, the Kapla and the the sign the Zeta and uh, you know your Pleiadians and stuff like that they don't want to deal with them okay and we're gonna get in on that in a second their relationship with other species is well if you're a species that's dealing with nature coming together being fruitful you know living a life that is uh, that is accustomed to nature's uh, uh, foundational structure then that yes they will want to deal with you okay all right, all right. We may even actually have some blue avian beings that reincarnated as some of you Anunnaki people. We may even have some of you that actually may be a blue avian or two on the planet. Okay, because I already told you guys that your Illyrians, which is your cat-like feline extraterrestrial beings, we have some of them that got trapped down here on the planet when the first pole shift happened. You have some of them that have reincarnated as your Anunnaki or Anunnaki or your so-called black people and stuff like this all over the planet. Brazil, other other places, all over the place, all over the place. Mm-hmm. 
Not every single one of you guys, you Anunnaki people that's down here is actually Anunnaki. Some of you are something else and don't realize it. <laughs> Crazy, right? Yeah, I know. What, what is their objective? Some people might ask what their objectives are. Their objective is to get things right back into perspective. The way the planet is right now is not the way the planet is supposed to be. So when they come in as light, they always have a very important message to give on to those that are willing to listen, that are open. If you have your penile gland active, you can come into communication with these beings. And they usually have a very profound and important information to give. They know a lot. Okay? All right? And they do have psychic abilities. They can defend themselves. They simply choose not to involve themselves in other affairs of other beings that may be very violent in nature. But it doesn't mean that they won't fight with them if they have to. It doesn't mean that they won't. Since they come from higher dimensional spaces, higher dimensional uh, worlds, higher dimensional realities, these beings have come in contact with other beings from higher dimensional realities. And these beings that come from higher dimensional realities, usually they don't really have anything to do with fourth, fourth dimensional entities. Usually they don't deal with them because they're already in a higher reality. So they don't really come in contact with one another unless they really have to, or unless someone in the fourth dimension hit a button to where now they've been alerted that, you know, something's going unless a being from the fourth dimensional plane of existence hits a button and is saying that he's being attacked or there's an invasion going on then your blue avians or some other ones might come in contact with those beings that are attacking another foreign planet and try to dispose of them because they are a nuisance okay does that make sense so you know blue avians they they have many different types of psychic abilities they can manipulate they can manipulate matter. They have the ability to speak through the mind. They have the ability to, to turn into different forms of light. You know, so that means they, they can escape a, a, a chaotic situation quite easily. You know, um, you know, some of them actually have fighting prowess. Okay, some of them can manipulate like uh, some of them are like cryomancers. They have the ability to manipulate ice. You know, they have um, they can hear very well okay they have very good vision they can see very well and they can see certain things that certain people cannot see because they were made a certain way okay yes they do have a penile gland yes they have a pineal gland yes they do okay but theirs is a different shape and it it, it, it looks different and it's a different size than ours on the planet because every you know like you have beings that have penile glands, but theirs might be a different shape and it might be a different size and stuff like that. Usually it, the shape remains the same, but theirs is more like, like a golf ball. And the reason why it's, not, it's like that because theirs is very mature. Their penile glands are very mature. They, they, they've been using it the, the entire time that they've been existing. So, you know, like us on the planet, a lot of us, our, our penile glands are very small and premature because we are not using it to its highest uh, highest uh, optimum usage or whatever you want to call it, like 100%, you know, we're, we're, start, we're slowly starting to get to that point because on the planet we're having this awakening and we're in the arc cycle of Aquarius. And they are a part of the galactic councils. When you talk about the galactic federation, stuff like this, these particular beings are a part of it also, like your Illyrians and stuff like this. When we talk about the galactic federation, not all of the beings that are there are bad, okay? Like you had certain beings that were in the front, the, 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 that were in the, you know, the leading table. You know, the ones that represent, you know, the Galactic Federation. You know, the ones that make making all these uh, rules and regulations. You had some that um, weren't fit for their position. So they got removed from that position and now they're uh, suffering for it greatly. You know, they tried to do an about face on their own people. Or doing about face on the the species that are a part of the Federation. If you're a part of the Federation of beings, these the, these councils were made to for other species to govern over each other to make sure that no one's getting too out of line, that there's peace and tranquility amongst beings, and that they're supposed to have each other's back. So if you're I don't know 
maybe a different type of species and there's another different type of species that you're dealing with at the front of the table and you're supposed to be part of the same order the same federational order of of of, of, of light and wisdom if you don't defend your own group i mean if you don't defend the other species that's part of your group they may be another species but they're a part of your group if you don't defend them then it's going to be seen as a different type of form of treason. Okay? And, 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 there, and there, there's a galactic punishment for stuff like that. Okay? You could be stripped from your rank. And who can do that to you? Anu. Or some of these other gods that's out there. Okay? You can be stripped of your rank. Okay? And some of these ones that were in the head of the table, some of them, not all of them, got their, their rank stripped from them because... Uh, you know they're 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 not they're not uh they're not doing their jobs okay they're not doing their jobs this happens sometimes this is why in star wars and there will be a star wars video that i will be making l later on down the line just so you know um in star wars they showed you that council of beings that were sitting there you know you you had a council of beings sitting around in a, in a circle and they were all talking about the importance of the cosmos and you know what they were going to do and whatnot the blue avians and their connection with ancient egyptian the ancient egyptian bird head deities what is the connection do they know each other yes they do but this is the thing the blue avians Okay, when they show you like the hieroglyphs of like a bird head being that looks blue and he had like a bird head, was that a blue avian? No, it was not. It was one of our deities that had a bird head, okay, all right, much like Horus and stuff like this, or, or much like Horus and stuff like this. But what, what, what is not being said is that, yes, that being did appear blue, but that was not a blue avian though. Have blue avians been down here on Tiamat? Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Okay, they've been down here like a long time ago. We're talking about like far beyond ancient times. They were down here. Okay. Okay. There were some of the beings that used to come down here asking for materials and stuff like this. They used to come down here asking for materials, you know, to, to bring to their own home worlds and stuff like that. And we used to accommodate them because they were friends of ours. They knew very much about the towers of Oregon energy and stuff like that. They knew about that stuff. Okay. And if they had any knowledge to help us advance, they would. Okay, okay. Blue avians and, and, and their connection with uh, Ple Pleiadians and, and Dracos and stuff like this. Because I know you guys have been seeing on YouTube that you have certain like Caucasians and some of these Asians and some of these Arabics. You know, these orcs, these humans. You see them on YouTube talking about Pleiadians and Dracos and Octorians and, 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 and Blue avians and stuff like this. And they want to act like they have some type of connection to them. And they're doing all kind of channeling and stuff like this. Let me explain something to you. These uh, blue avians don't have no connection to them. They don't have no real connection to them. Okay? All right? This is what they would like to have you believe. All right? And the reason why they would like to have you believe this is because of this. These people that are doing all this channeling, you're not supposed to be trying to channel another being. Why? Because... When you're channeling other beings, you're opening up a window for them to try to take over your vessel. Okay? Alright, we're going to be talking about, you know, um, possession and demonic shit and all kind of stuff. We'll be talking about that soon enough. But I just want to make it known that if you ever run into a situation where you have a friend that's telling you, Oh, yo, I be channeling these beings and all this other stuff. Get away from them. Get away from them. You're not supposed to be channeling nothing. Okay? Alright? You want to do something, you can easily leave your body. Okay, you do not need to be challenging nothing, all right? All right, and let me tell you something else. Blue avians are not going to want anything to do with an orc. Why? Because you're out of balance with, with everything. Why would they want to come to you and give you a specific message? For what? For what? Y'all, you have a deadline for where when y'all going to die on this planet. Y'all have a deadline. What are they going to give you profound information for? What the hell y'all going to use it for? To destroy the planet even further? That's why y'all are doing all this fracking in Antarctica? To, 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 to try to find a way to go into inner earth? Okay? These beings actually have a connection to inner earth. They can go in there whenever they want. You guys want to go into inner earth and all this other stuff, but it's, it's just not, it's never, it's never going to work for y'all. Okay? 
okay? You need to be a being of nature to be able to even go into Aghard or all those other places down there, okay? You need to be vibrating at your 13 vibrations, man. So, you know, I mean, hey, you know, I mean, did, have we had other beings that were like negative beings that came down there and did bad things? Yeah, we did, but that, that's dealing with different situations, different types of other kinds of situations. Now, how they came, how they went in down there, what I believe is that, you know, they had an inside man, somebody who actually knew the, the, the how, to, how to get in. And, you know, they probably paid this person off well, had them come in and whatever, and then they started trying to destroy the place or whatnot. Because sometimes intergalactic trade happens, and sometimes, you know, sometimes certain routes get, you know, sometimes certain routes are dangerous, so you have to take a, de a different route because you have other beings in the sectors of the galaxies and stuff like this. And sometimes if they run into each other and they know that you got cargo with you or something, there can be conflict and they may want whatever it is you have. Yeah, things like that happen. Situations like that be happening. And you got to fight to secure your whatever it is that you may have in your, your spaceship and stuff like this. And they're trying to fight with you because they feel like, you know, you have something important on you. Or maybe they had an inside man that told them that was watching y'all when y'all was putting everything inside your spaceship or whatever. So then you have them fighting with each other and stuff like this. You understand what I'm saying? You know. You know, they can see into the future. Blue avians can see into the future. They can talk to you mentally. You know, they, they oh yeah, they can, they can actually believe it. Yeah, they can fly. And they can also travel as light as well. So, but now you might say, you know, but do they have wings and stuff like this? They don't need them. You know, they don't need them. And if they do have wings, it's like a lot like these wings that these Anunnaki's have. You know, it's like these wings that, like, like I'll explain it to you. It's like these wings that they're like floating in midair. And it's like a special type of, like, these wings were created for you in your creation process. So these wings are directly connected to your, um, your genetic coding. And your genetic coding has a, a direct corresponding relationship with those wings. And only you can put those wings on. And the wings that you don't uh, put them on like a, like a book bag or something like that, or attach it on you. No, no, it doesn't work like that. And, they, and you're not and you're not born with wings either. It's not, it doesn't work like that. The way it works is that the wings literally, mentally, you have the wings fly to you and they hook into your back. They literally like hook into your back and they become a part of like your skeletal structure. They literally become a part of you until you're ready to take them off mentally. They literally come off with no pain. You don't have to rip them off your back. You don't even got to do none of that. Mentally, they, they, they hook into you or they can detach from you on a psychic level. If the blue avians have wings, it would be wings to that uh, of that caliber. Okay. Because you have other beings out there that are not Anunnaki and they have wings also, in case you didn't know this, you know. But like wings that, you know, you can actually fight with and stuff like this. So, you know, it's just good to know. You know, and then blue avians also have other abilities that are not known to us. And yes, yes, they do have a radio, a, a radio. All beings in the cosmos have abilities, but some have greater abilities than others. Especially if you're a being that comes from a higher dimensional realm. You're going to have abilities that are going to transcend those that come from a lower dimensional realm. And the reason why is because beings that come from a higher dimensional realm have radioactive properties in their bodies and a radioactive connection with the sun and the moon and all these other uh, plasma plasmatoids that are out here in the, in the infinite cosmos. Okay. You know. And yes, and yes, the, the blue avians are spirit guides, people. They are spirit guides. Yes, they are. You know, they're spirit guides. And yes, they can try to um, give you profound information that you've never heard of before. They can try to lead you into a location where they may need your help or something. Hell, they might even help you if you're having a, a issue with a, another being or something like that. And they see that you're in a bad spot. They might try to, like, intervene and try to get involved. And yes, they have very big armadas and spaceships people they have spaceships that look like they they look like discs but they're also shaped different they got lights on them and it's they're very they're really big discs and they're, they're like hovercrafts and they look a certain way 
and like it's like two or three discs together and they have lights on them and you know it's it looks metallic but you can tell like it's not like a regular type of metal metal like this alloy that's part of their spaceships and stuff like this it looks a certain way it looks a certain way okay and it's and their spaceships are very very silent you wouldn't know if they were there unless you look up there and yes the, and yes their spaceships do carry this um this cloud creating fog where they can hide in a clog like you know in a cloud in a cloud like you know in a cloud like you know uh what you call it like a gas or whatever where they um they camouflage up here yeah they they be doing that blue a beans be doing that and you have many other beings that do the same thing as well cuz they don't want to be you know they don't want you to be able to see them very well and this is why you have you know different youtubers that are always looking up in the sky and seeing all kinds of stuff Oh yeah, the connection with the humans. You want to know what the blue avian's connection with the humans is? Nothing. They don't have no connection with these beings. They're just talking crap. I got. I just need y'all to understand. These humans, they desperate to be us. They desperate to be in connection with some kind of higher forces and stuff like this. They're, you know, they're just talking shit. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Okay, and there's a bunch of misinformation going on with them, and they're telling each other that they're gonna ascend. And the blue avians are the harbingers of their ascension. No, they're not. They're not, you're not ascending to nothing. You're going to die right here. You're not going nowhere. I, I don't... I don't. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my goodness, man. I swear to God, it's like these people don't understand. You, you want to keep channeling and channeling and channeling, and then when something happens to you, then you wonder what, what was going on. And a lot of these people are agents for this system as well, by the way. A lot of these people that you be, a lot of these white folks you be seeing up there on YouTube talking all this stuff. A lot of these people are agents, and they're being paid off to mislead and misguide a lot of you unsuspecting people that don't have real knowledge on these kinds of subjects and stuff like this. I'm telling you, they're talking all kind of crap up there. Oh, we're gonna ascend and, and, and all this other shit, and we're gonna meet Jesus Christ and all this other bullshit. These people are bugging. Yeah, and the blue avians, you know, they've been here around the time when the moon and the earth were actually one. They've been here around that time as well. And who are these orcs really channeling? You know, Dracos and all these other ones that are out there and they're taking over their bodies and all kinds of shit. Yeah, man. You know, we're going to be talking about demonic possession. We're going to go really in-depth because I know a lot about it, you know. So, you know... It's like, like I said before, man, you know, they're, they're channeling all kind of stuff, and it's just not getting them nowhere. Now, will the Blue Avians be coming down here to try to intervene with the Galactic War, the Plasma Apocalypse that's supposed to be coming? There's a very good chance of that. Um, there's going to be a lot of beings that you guys are not even going to expect to see. It's ones that we haven't even talked about on this channel that you're going to see. Because the orcs that are down here, they've pissed off a lot of different species out there when they did their colonizing on different planets. Okay? Alright, understand that. Okay? Alright. So, with that being said, you know, the blue avian people, they come from very beautiful lush, lush meadows. They come from beautiful places with waterfalls, beautiful mountainous areas. Their planets, you know... The reason why their planets are so unknown is because they're coming from different dimensional planes of existence. They're going from different dimensions that these humans can't go to. The humans can't go to the 5D and all that other stuff. They can't do that. They're bound 4D and lower. They're bound. They can't go no higher. Okay? All right? And that's why I don't understand how they think that they're going <laughs> to... Hey, you know, whatever. But see, the thing is, is this. They also come from other worlds where, you know, you, you have like planetoids that are right next to each other and they're in communion with other planets you know where they where the blue avians come from is where they have like a community of planets you'll notice that when you go up into higher dimensional realms you're going to notice that there's planetoids that ha are really close to other planetoids because they it's like a community of planets and you have different species that are in connection with other species and they move like a unit because they're all friends and family and stuff like this Okay, and the blue aliens, they have a, they have, 
they're extremely powerful because they come from the higher dimensional realms. Like, our weapons that are down here, that won't work on them. Just like the Dracos, because they come from higher dimension. Well, if, if they're even higher dimensionally than these Archon Dracos, then <laughs> those kind of weapons are not going to work on these beings. Okay, they can literally shoot light into you and fry you alive. Okay, like these beings are powerful. Okay, and they can heal on a level that's crazy. They can heal you. If you're down here, you have like, if you have all kind of burns on you and stuff, they can heal you. They could heal you back to health, man. You know? You know what I'm saying? So, like... You know, they can send codes into your body that can that can heal... That, that They can send certain types of codes into your body that... that it, it, the codes of, of, of the energy that they, they, they put into you will stay in your body and it'll be dormant for a long, for a long period of time. And if when, one day you might get hurt, your body will heal instantly. You'll be like, how did that happen? It's because the, the information that they put into you is temporary, but it's in your body for a certain period of time. When you get hurt, then your body ends up healing. You know, because these are beings that, have, that that come from love and light energy, which is the true darkness. These are, yeah, these beings are somewhat connected to darkness. A lot of your up, upper, higher echelon of beings that come from 5D and higher, they're supposed to be beings of darkness. Okay. That's why this planet has a corresponding relationship with beings of darkness, because this is a planet of dark energy. That's why the that's why Tiamat right now is going into the fifth. Well, it's already there in the fifth dimension. But now the third dimensional beings that are down here, a lot of them are aware of 4D and 5D, but we're going to be shifting in to the fourth D and then and then 5D and then ongoing because of the fact. That when we get the pole shift reversal on the planet, which is going to happen in, in, in just a few now, when it happens, we're going to shift over. The carbon dated people are going to shift over into those higher spectrums of of, of dimensional uh, energy and consciousness. So your bodies are going to become higher updated uh, dimensional bodies. So, you know, don't be surprised when you see these beings in your contact and you, you, you know you're connecting with, with with them and whatnot. Don't be surprised because there you have other beings that's out there that want to see you guys in the best position possible. Okay? All right? You're always going to have other beings that's out there doing some other kind of stuff, you know? But, yeah, you know? You know? Because, you know, there's not much that's known about them. There's, there's not much that's known about them. And, <laughs> see, when, you, when, you, when we talk about the, the Blue Avians... And the scenario to where they're going to be coming down here with other beings. There's going to be judgment placed upon those that have to destroy the, the beings of nature down here. You know? You're going to, you know, I know you guys be seeing that they're talking about that they star seeds and all this other stuff. See, the only people that are here that are star seeds, the only people that are here that are star seeds is peoples of carbon. If you're not a person that is of a carbon connection, you cannot be a star seed. Because in order to be a star seed, you need to be, you have to be made out of stardust. And I, make, be, being made out of stardust is really not stars, it's really different planets. And all these, all these different um, com, um, the composites of different types of uh, material from different types of planets, like Uranus and all these other planets, we are made up of di different metals and different types of uh, uh Different types of like metals and different compounds and stuff like this all mixed to one to create a, a, a infinite being. Carbon dated people are literally star children because they come from all these different planets that are out here. They come from most uh, most of these different planets that are out here, especially in your alpha universe. You know, you all these different planets that we got out here. We have portions of these planets in our bodies because it was made like that. So when they call talking about star seeds. That's essentially what they're talking about. There's different types of star seeds. You have star genius seeds. You know, you have different types of star seeds and stuff like this. But the main point that I'm trying to make is, is this is that that's you guys. Carbon dated people, you know. So, you know, that's why I'm saying, you know, you, I see a lot of you guys sending me videos about, you know, these orcs, these humans talking about that, you know, talking about star. They're literally pretending to be something they're not. It's ridiculous. And that's why I keep trying to say it's ridiculous. So... Don't pay no attention to that, you know. Some people, they be getting confused out here seeing all these videos and stuff.
you know these beings you know when when they sing they they can actually <laughs> they can actually uh you know when these beings they sing a lot of times they can help unlock certain things within you not only can they heal you with their music but the the, the, the sound vibrations can actually do certain things they also do when they sing they, there's certain like love frequencies that hit your heart chakra all right that's what i was trying to tell you before and when it hits your heart chakra it puts you in this state of bliss and you're able to easily come together as people because it's a healing energy that's now in the atmosphere you see these beings they they, they these beings actually help other beings to come together okay all right okay these beings you know definitely have a very strong heart chakra all right and uh see because these beings are also dealing with a a a, a solar solar connection these beings most more than definitely have a soul as well now with that being said because they they come from higher dimensional realms and they're very powerful beings beings that are, that are like are at a lower level they're not going to be able to come in contact with these beings and even if they were able to they wouldn't even be able to stand 600 feet they wouldn't even be able to stand 600 feet of them because their auras are too powerful like i keep saying before like i've said many many a times before okay when you're dealing with higher dimensional beings these are beings that are dealing with certain light frequencies that are very rare in this part of the, 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 that are very rare in different parts of the universe out there and not only that these are beings of nature if you're not a being of nature they're not going to really want anything to do with you other than to fight with you if you're a being that's outside of nature's jurisdictions or, or, or laws and you're running around trying to create other kind of problems because a being that's outside of nature is more than likely going to start problems. Okay. All right. And and the blue avians have they have they have come they have come in contact with our government and stuff like that. And they try to explain certain things to our the you know these so-called government officials, but they don't they they're not having it. Just like the Anunnaki, the Anunnaki have talked to these Dracos and stuff like this and, and, and you know your shadow government and they don't want to listen even even though they have no choice but to listen. They have no choice. So you know, but but you know, when they're done dealing with them, they're they're back to doing the same old stupid thing again. Because these you have certain beings that just want to destroy stuff. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, with that being said, you know, I'm gonna end this video off here. You know, and also, oh yeah, you're probably wondering what planet they come from. Okay, uh, pff, man, I wish I knew. <laughs> See, I don't know everything. I don't know everything I wish I knew what planet they came from but you know I'll eventually get to that at a later time you know you gotta leave your body and travel up and then and then you'll eventually find out what you need to find out they have a lot of advanced technology on the planet and, and the reason not only the, the reason why is why they have a lot of this technology is because they're uh, they have a very strong relationship with the Anunnaki people because we are the the, create, the, the creators of technology but because of that you know they have a lot of advanced technology on their planets also because we're constantly going from to and fro from their planets to others as well um can there can um the blue avians their, their their planet is unknown to me but i will say this their planet can it can it be invaded by other like like lower beings no it can't because they're coming from a higher dimensional level they're coming from a higher dimensional world and stuff like this they can't I'm not even too sure that these these lower ones can even reach them. They can't. And even if they were able to, you know, they, they these galactic councils and stuff like that, they're constantly overwatching the cosmos and what's going on. So they're not even going to be able to do that even if they try. Warriors would get deployed immediately to stop these Archon bastards from doing what they want to do. So uh, this is a little bit of information on the blue avian people and a little bit about them and their situations you know comment like and subscribe it's your boy serious inner temple and i'm out i will be making another video very soon concerning other topics and other subjects and stuff like this i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh like comment and subscribe man you know um 
and uh, be on the lookout for other videos and other subjects and other topics and stuff like other stuff like this. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. All right, <laughs> it's your boy Serious. Serious out.